Hey everyone, welcome back to Deeper Roots. In the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God shows anger when he's not pleased or honored with what people were doing. God was angry with Moses when he struck the rock, and Jesus was angry when people were using a synagogue as a marketplace. God gets angry at us sinful people sometimes, and when Jesus is angry, it's often used as a model for what righteous anger actually is. However, there's an inherent problem when we try to flip the conversation around. Today's question is, is it okay to be angry at God? The listener clarifies, sometimes we can be bitter towards the Creator. We want to blame someone or something besides ourselves. Can I blame God for the things that happen in my life and be angry, even if it's not just for a little while? Actually, we found a similar question in an extremely popular question as well. That is, if we can give God all the credit, can we also give God all the blame? We talk about both questions in today's episode. This question, like the other questions that we've talked about, were all submitted online using the form on our webpage, which is found at www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. There, you'll not only find the form, but also all our episodes, as well as where you can find the podcast. You can find us at YouTube, Google Podcasts, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you want to help spread this ministry to others, please share it with your friends or with your church so more people can have the opportunity to ask their own questions and listen to other answers. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get to the conversation. everyone for joining us today. Today's question is, is it okay to be angry at God? The person clarifies, sometimes we can be bitter towards the creator. We want to blame someone or something else besides ourselves. Can I blame God for the things that happen in my life and be angry, even if it's just for a little while? Um, a similar question that actually came up through uh, online, not necessarily through the form, but came up through other means. A similar question is if we can give God all the credit about the things in our lives, can we also give God all the blame? Today we have uh, Pastor Luis and as well as Esther and myself. Uh, thank you for joining us again. Pastor, do you want to get us started? Yeah. Um, the, I think the word, the, the question is worded, is it okay, right? Um, be, yeah, is it okay to be angry at God? I, I, we have to work on, the on, I guess, the wording there um, because it depends on the wording will also de- uh, determine the answer. Is it okay to be angry at God in the sense of right and wrong? Um, I think it's understandable, but it's not okay in the sense where it's okay to remain there or to remain angry at God. I think it's very human and it's very understandable to, to go through that phase where we don't understand the nature of our existence and the nature of who God is and who He is and His, and His attributes that sometimes can lead us to be angry with God. And I speak that from experience in my personal life uh, when I went through a lot of anger with God. So if you ask me the question, is it very human? Is it very natural to go through that phase of feeling angry at God? Listener, I would say yes, it's very natural. It's very. But if the, if the question is more, is it, is, it, um, is it excusable in the sense of being right or being righteous? For you to be angry at God, no, because it's all based on a misunderstanding of who God is and the nature of our existence. Um, so the follow-up of the question, also you said, um, was the other question was is, um, is if we give God all the credit, can we also give God all the blame? Yeah, and then th- that that again goes back to the misunderstanding of God and who He is and why he deserves the glory and he can't receive any of the blame and i think that again goes to deeper questions that we have to deal with in this episode. well we are deeper roots yeah we so. are very deep today so <laughs> deeper 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 roots okay so let's just start with the whole thing is it natural for us to go through a phase as human beings where we could go be mad at god sometimes some people may never experience traumatic things in their homes mm-hmm. or in their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe even they may feel some kind of anger at God. And then there's people that do go through tragic stuff, through situations where you say, why me? Mm-hmm. Why did this happen to me? Why my family? Or mm-hmm. why didn't God stop this? 
and 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 then of course you go through that whole thing uh, where our natural um, instinct is to blame the person we believe should have prevented it or stopped mm-hmm. it or should be watching out for our well-being um, so what do you think yeah no I, I think I mean I think it's a little easier to speak because I have more life experience. I think if you would have asked me this question when I was younger, I might have a harder time answering. Uh, But going through life and and going through hardship, do you, have I learned that even though, as you say, you can be upset as a natural humanistic thing to do towards the Lord, experience have shown that, you know, Pastor, I think you were preaching this this morning, God can create the bad into something good, mm-hmm. and it's for our benefit. Not to say that he, you know, sometimes our consequences of our sin leads us in bad paths, and those are the examples of that wasn't his plan, but even then he can turn into something good. But I can I can see how people can have a hard time. We're humans, you know, like you go through abuse, you go through, you didn't do anything wrong. I can understand why you're upset. You know, death in the family. My dad died four weeks ago. Could he have stopped that? Yeah. Could I get gotten angry at, the, at God? Absolutely. So I, I understand that, but I also have years of experience to, that I've learned <laughs> that have taught me differently. So I think if you would ask me this as a 20-something-year-old, I think I would, I would say <laughs> I would answer differently from from my answer right now yeah if you if you had asked me when i was 22 23 i mm-hmm. would say the same thing god is worthy of being angry at but it was because of a lot of misunderstanding on my part of my understanding of who he is and also the understanding of a human of human uh existence mm-hmm. of our the the nature of our existence as, as humanity um so any other comments before we start breaking it down um no no so so let's talk about uh, the misunderstandings mm-hmm. because like I said being angry at God and if you're our listener who asked this question and if you're feeling angry at God first of all I want to tell you that we understand that um, if you've gone through something in your life where you feel uh, God is to blame it's very human to feel that way but I hope that our answer will give you a little bit more hope and understanding that it's not as simple as it might th- it seem but that there is hope in the very person that we get mad at, which is God. So mm-hmm. the first thing is that we have to understand the nature of our existence. Um, when we think about evil, when we think about the bad stuff in life, like the secondary question that you asked, why can't we blame him for all the bad and the evil in the world? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you want to blame him for the evil, I guess we would have to go back to him giving us free will. Because that's where it all lies. The reason evil exists is because God gave us uh, the ability to choose between evil and between good. He gave us that ability in, in the Garden of Eden. He said, here's the tree, do not touch it. And he gave man the ability to choose to obey or to choose to disobey. And uh, that's one of those classic questions you get in teen group all the time. If God knew we were going to sin, why did he create us? And, you know, you go back and you're like, okay, yeah, I mean, he could have stopped us from ever existing. He could have stopped us from ever even having the opportunity to choose. Um, He could have chosen to not create us, but then it would be sort of uh, parallel to someone knowing that their kids are going to bring them a lot of pain and suffering and then instead choosing to deny them existence if they could go back in the in, in the past you know or abortion or abortion right uh, but yet God even though he knew that he foreknew because he's God he foreknew that he we were going to choose to disobey him choose to defy him choose to bring sin and evil into this world uh, he still chose to give us existence because he knew that there was going to be a way to show us his love and, and, and to show us redemption through the sacrifice of his, of his own son. I think if he had been thinking in human terms, God, if he was thinking that way, he would have said, yeah, I'm not going to bother with these people. I'm not going to bother with this creation. I'm going to deny them existence. Yet he chose to give us existence and he chose to give us that same free will that he, he, get, he has to be able to choose right from wrong. Now, what would the alternate be? What if he had created us? He still, he still, does, he doesn't deny his existence. 
but yet he creates us in a way where we have no free will. What kind of existence or reality would we live in? Esther, what do you think? Where we have no freedom? We have no... What's the point? <laughs> exactly. There's no fate. There's, I mean, I mean, there's, there's no, no fate. There's, everything's fate. Yeah. Everything's pre-programmed. Yeah. Everything, every decision you make, everything that ever happens in your life mm -hmm. is pre-planned. Mm -hmm. And all you are is a, basically a puppet carrying out the programming mm -hmm. that has already put it into you. That's yeah. the current reality we would live. Well, why not kind of the good sides of both i mean there's just a, a a thought what if it what if we took these what if examples and uh, what if we had free will but what if the choices that were given to us were not uh were not evil choices like for example uh god gave the choice whether or not to eat of the new tree of knowledge of good and evil there was the good choice which was i uh, don't eat of the tree and there was the bad choice eat of the tree that choice was made available to us but as I, I at least the way i understand it perfection isn't only just necessarily one thing only you, like god can make things better can make things uh, can be perfect but god also has many different ways of act of uh, of portraying himself as perfection so that so i understand that as how there can be different things to choose from but all of those choices are still good he would deny us the ability to choose evil yeah that's, that's what, that's what, that's what saying. i'm saying yeah yeah but like i said that's a third type of reality okay that's the first reality is the one we're living mm -hmm. um the second reality is where we're all just robots and we're just programmed to do what mm -hmm. he wants but we have no no ability to choose of our own it's all just predestined, predetermined, and we're just carrying out a play, and in in uh, that's being pre-written in, in the ages, or like you said, that's a third reality where you're saying God does give us free will, but He denies us any opportunity to exercise it, because you in order in order to exercise your free will, you have to have choices. And you have to have all the choices available because you were then what we're what we're what we're describing there is really a condition of slavery. It's sort of akin like to you having your mom be your mom forever, <laughs> because of course your mom when you're little don't touch this, don't do that, don't go outside, don't. Worry, there's evil out there, and 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 in order for you to be safe, she would deny you to ever be in any kind of danger. I mean, there comes a point where you would feel trapped. You would feel denied of your liberty. Independence. Independence mm -hmm. to be able to choose, to be able to say, hey, I, I, I know what's right and I know what's wrong and I'm going to choose right. I'm going to choose right. If all you have is the safe road, right? And, and, and that's, that's what God chose to give us. He chose to give us the experience where we have the ability to choose between right and wrong. So that what so that when we make our decisions, we have that choice to to choose the right thing because we know and we determined what the opposite is, and that is that's going to bring us suffering and hurt. And instead, we choose that. And I think it's like if we go back to that illustration of your mom, seeing you as a young man already, you know, I'm sure she's proud to see you make good choices because mm -hmm. she and always independently. And that's independently, what, what every parent yeah. wants. They want it independent. That's the goal. To yeah. raise your child to be independent to make the right choices and and i'm sure your mom probably it is a reality she sees you and she's very proud because you she knows you have all the options at your disposal mm -hmm. <laughs> she knows you could have chosen this path or this path of this path but you've chosen the path you're on and i'm sure that makes her very proud to see wow i've taught my son right i've taught i've taught him to to choose right mm -hmm. you know and that's sort of the the liberty which god gave us so that's the reality of our existence we don't live in a world where God uh, just gave us good choices, but he gave us all the choices available and he taught us to, this is right, this is wrong. But what happened, unfortunately, man in the Garden of Eden chose wrong. Mm -hmm. So then that was what introduced evil into the world. And because there's evil in the world, there's pain in the world, there's uh, heartache in the world, there's tragedy in the world, there's death, there's suffering, there's injustice. 
And that's where we have to then come to understand the nature of God within this existence, that God is not the author of evil. We chose it as humanity, and God allows it to exist because denying us that opportunity to see the fruits of our decisions would be limiting our free will again, would mm -hmm. be denying us freedom, would be denying us the ability to, to choose what's right. So then he allows evil to exist side by side with good because of the way he set up our free will. That that's the only way, and then it goes back to apologetics where we talk about that love is the supreme ethic. If you think about it, if God uh, didn't give us this type of free will, then there would be no such thing as true love. Mm. When we're talking about God, we're talking about a person who is love. And then the only way for us to express true love to God is A, that we're not programmed as robots, and B, that we are able to choose to love him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or to not love him. <laughs> We're able to choose to embrace him or to reject him. That's the only way for true love to exist. If not, it would it wouldn't if my only choice is to love God, then is that really true love? Really? Yeah. So then that's the choice that was presented to mankind. And we chose and there therefore evil came into those worlds. So um there's been a lot of heartache since the Garden of Eden to this point. There's a lot of injustice. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of things that are uh, we we struggle with understanding why. Why would God allow this? And the reality and 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 the answer to that is because He has to in order for Him to be a just and loving God in in respecting our free will as people. But then we come to the point of then the nature of God again of what He does in this fallen world. I preached about that this morning, and I want to read this in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, where it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out what the work that God does from the beginning to the end. And where I, I love that passage because it sort of draws on that even the evil in the world, even the heartaches in the world, even the things we don't understand. And that's what it says. We can't really understand what God does from the beginning to the end. He says everything, if we put it in his hands, he's the one that is able to work it for good. Like Romans 8, 28 says, mm -hmm. you know, for he, uh, those who love God, he turns everything good, uh, even all things turn together for good. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that with God, we, we can learn to trust him, that he's not the creator of evil, but he can choose to use those things even the evil things that he didn't want to, to happen he could have he wished he could have prevented them for us mm -hmm. but he has to allow them to exist because of free will mm -hmm. he has promised to use those for for good mm -hmm. he has promised to use them for 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 a blessing and i think there's so many uh, examples in the bible can you think of one i have several but I, i've been talking for like 10 minutes already <laughs> <laughs> examples of of how God uses things together for good. Things um, that we could have said, wow, that's a tragedy. Solomon. Solomon in, um, in his, in his uh, writings there in Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. right? That's what he's saying. What other example? Oh, uh, Lot. Lot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Lot, as he writes, uh, if you want to talk about being mad at God, he came time where he was upset. At, he was upset. He was like doubting and stuff. Jonah. But Jonah. But how about Joseph? Remember Joseph? Mm -hmm. How much could we we could be in Joseph's uh, position and go like, God, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm faithful to you, and now why my my brothers sold me to it's slavery? One after the other. <laughs> one after another. Yeah. Now I'm I'm accused <laughs> falsely that I was uh, <laughs> sexual harassment in the job, mm -hmm. and now I'm in prison Jail. and everything. Yeah. But God mm -hmm. had a plan. He didn't mm -hmm. ordain these events. Mm -hmm. He didn't cause his brothers to hate him and to sell him into slavery. He didn't cause them to, uh, Potiphar's wife, to accuse him falsely and end up in jail. Yet he chose to use those things mm -hmm. for a grander plan that he had, which was to save his family and to save the lineage of Christ through from the famine. Mm -hmm. Because then when the famine hit, Joseph was in a position of, of, of power, of, mm -hmm. of, of greatness, to be able to save his people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's, that's just one very small example of the big picture that we can't see. Like it says mm -hmm. right there that God has, uh, except that no man can find out what the work of God do is from the beginning to the end. We don't know exactly. Another example is Esther, your namesake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Esther, for such a time yes. like this, how did she end up in the palace? Mm -hmm. I mean, through A, she had lost her parents. 
as a young woman. They had been murdered, not just so they died. They, they, they had been murdered, her taken uncle. away from, from mm-hmm. her uncle. They were living in a foreign land, had been ransacked from the Israel, taken to, to uh, Babylon. Mm-hmm. And yet all of this, God was working for a plan of good. Mm-hmm. And then when, when someone needed to be there to be able to rescue and to speak out in, in the name of the people, she was in the right place at the right time. And that's why that, that famous words, for such a time like this, she went. She went, and she went into the pal- into the palace and saved her people, and 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 that's the things. Many examples that when we look at the evil and the hurts and our pains in our lo- in, in in our lives, we have two choices: either get mad at God and blame Him, or trust Him and say, Lord, I believe you are not responsible for this evil, but I trust that you can do something good with this evil mm-hmm. in my life and turn it for good. And it's really a matter of trust. You have follow-ups? I yeah, think I also it's important to remember as a believer, I think Carlos, remember when Carlos was our guest and he talked about not lying to people about the Christian life? The reality, the Christian life is not going to be an easy thing. It's not going to be all of a sudden you're never going to you know, go through suffering. You're never going to get angry. You're mm-hmm. never. It's actually opposite, the opposite of that and understanding that, but also with the hope and knowing the promise that the Lord will you know, Romans eight twenty eight. Well, all anything that bad comes our way, he's going to turn it into something good, and you know that's the kind of life that we live that's different from others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I just have one follow up question. What about things that are outside of our collective, collectively as humans? What is uh, what are th- about things that are outside of our collective choice, like sickness or cancer? Obviously, we talked about things that are like um, like for example, the Joseph sexual harassment at the job, like collectively someone has made the choice to uh sexually assault someone to uh to rape someone uh to do something vile to someone else that was a so that was within the choice of humanity uh someone has decided to cheat on their partner that was within the collective choice of humanity but what about things that aren't in our collective choice like like i said cancer well, it's all your definition on collective. What do you mean by collective like, choice? Like, we, we, we didn't, choice, we didn't like make the choice to... Uh, disasters. Yeah. You like, didn't oh, choose so, well, so. a hurricane. That's why I said it's the definition again, mm-hmm. because collective, if we, it depends how far you want to take collective, because if we oh. take it back to to Adam, yes, it's a collective where he's part of humanity. Mm-hmm. He, it was a collective choice he made, unfortunately, for all of us, <laughs> in, in falling Adam and Eve. And they brought evil. Those things exist only because mm-hmm. the fall. Uh, mm-hmm. God's creation, there was no sickness. There was God's no crea- tsunami. There was none of that. There mm-hmm. was no earthquakes. There mm-hmm. was no cancer. There was no fallen nature. So that comes because of the this, this, this sinful fallen experience of humanity since the, uh, the Garden of Eden. And just a note, because we were really contemplating this in, in, in the pastor's conference I just went to. Um, there's young. There's some people, and if you are one of these people, uh, I respect your beliefs, and I know very good brothers <laughs> that believe this. But some people believe in in in, uh, in Calvinism to the point where they believe that g- there is no free will, that God just pre-programs everybody to either go to heaven or go to hell. He chose who's going to go to heaven, who to go to hell, and we don't believe in that. Uh, but if you do, that's uh, that's we respect that. <laughs> you know, we don't share it, but we respect it. But one thing I was contemplating with my, my pastor is this, that, you know, what a beauty, what a beauty, beautiful example of God's loving care for humanity, even though he gave us free will. He knew that we could use that free will also in choosing something even worse than just what happened in the fall. When the Bible relates after the fall, what exactly what in, what it immediately happens after that? The Bible says that he sent an angel to protect mm-hmm. the garden so that man would not eat from the fruit of life, mm-hmm. from the, our, the, the, the tree of life. Mm-hmm. Now, do you know what would, ha- would have happened to humanity if we had eaten of that true of tree of life? Mm-hmm. Immortality within our sin. Immortality within our sin. Mm-hmm. Greatly put. Immortality within our sin. Mm-hmm. I mean, we would live in this sinful state forever and ever and That's ever exhausting. and ever. <laughs> It sounds might sound fun to never no, die, but imagine and, and, and then being injured, being sick, and never having the escape of death. Mm-hmm. 
you know, at least for mm-hmm. those who know Christ, we know there's something better on the other side, but those mm-hmm. who not, but see, that's the way he provided that, that protection and saying, Hey, I'm not, I'm the, I gave you free will. You chose bad, but I'm going to provide a better way for you to choose me mm-hmm. so that if, even though you die physically, you're going to be able to be born again and live forever in a restored state mm-hmm. of joy, happiness, peace. And that's again just just the that's the nature of who God is, and it's a matter of faith whether we believe He is who He claims to be, a good God, not the author of evil, and we trust Him and and say, Lord, You are the architect of the ages. Here is my life. Here is my evil in my life. Here is the things that have touched me: injustices, hurts, pains, abuse, sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. Here it is, Lord. I trust You to to do something good with it, to turn something beautiful out of this mess. Or to be mad at him and see how that goes. Like I said, in my experience, it never led me anything until I finally trusted the him. And he has proven to me that he can create good out of evil in my life. Yeah, um, one of the stages of acceptance is anger and the need to blame someone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that one of the things that whoever is answer, asking this question is it okay to be angry at god maybe it's something that you're grieving about mm-hmm. uh maybe are you taking a uh, a point in your i mean I, I don't know what's going on in your life maybe this isn't something you're grieving about maybe this is just a general anger that you see the things going on in this world and you're angry that these are happening mm-hmm. but if it is maybe a part of the grief process think about what state you're in um like things happen in our lives and maybe uh something happened in your life and you're grieving for it uh what's the next step that you need to take in order to be able to uh, accept the thing that's happened this is important for like whether it's someone who's passed away or if it's someone who um uh if someone just left or something that happened to you yeah, maybe we need to clarify that it's being angry itself is not a sin. The Bible mm-hmm. says in Ephesians four, twenty six and twenty seven, be angry and do not sin. Mm-hmm. Not let do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Mm-hmm. Anger itself is not a sin. It's just mm-hmm. it can become sinful when we misplace it. And being angry at God is something that leads us to sin. Mm-hmm. But itself being angry because we live in an unjust world, we live in a painful world, we live in a a, a place of tragedy that sometimes tragedy hits a family uh it's natural to be angry just learn to not sin with that anger instead let that anger lead you to something even better like i i i I, um would say this to somebody i won't say who but i would say i would say this to this this is part of the reason why i've waged war against the devil because i've seen what the devil did to me to my childhood to my family to my mom's marriage i saw what sin did and that's why I choose to channel my anger of all that to the author of it, which is the devil, not God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this actually kind of like the topics that we talked about in this episode seem to be similar to a question we also got. Um, it's about Adam mm-hmm. and it's about uh, us taking the consequences uh, of adam's sin so it's just it's very interesting because i already knew what the next question i think we're gonna be talking about it next week Mm -hmm. uh or maybe in a few weeks depending on how our schedule goes but uh we see that question very relevant to this question yeah uh if you're if you've listened and you wanted to submit your submit submit that adam question listen to this episode too this was a good one uh in terms of like talking about that uh in terms of talking about that question but i believe that's about it for this episode yeah and that adam question is going to be more uh, more more of a theological Mm -hmm. answer yeah and that's why we have to deal with it in a separate one Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of good theology Mm -hmm. there we're already 30 minutes into this one so yeah yeah all right, sounds good. Thank right. you. Thank you for for asking this question, whoever and whoever asked it. Again, if you uh, would like to ask a question, or maybe you want to follow up on something that we talked about within the episode, within this episode, or any of the previous episodes, or you just want to give us some feedback, we'd love to hear it. We have a website and a form on that website. It's at www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. There you can find the form and you can submit uh, what you would like on there, whatever God is leading you to, whether it's uh, some feedback, 
or a question, whatever it is, we would love to hear it. Thank you for joining us this week, and uh, I hope that you would come back next week to uh, listen to the next podcast. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash Deeper Roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.